Good evening, everyone. Romney Smith at WTOC for our election news update. I know we don't normally have a digital news update normally at this time, but all night tonight we will be bringing you updates roughly every 30 minutes, continually updating numbers for various races all across the state and local races as well. We are coming to you on multiple platforms. That includes our website, WTOC.com, the WTOC apps, Amazon Fire, Roku, Twitter, and Facebook. Facebook is where you can interact with us live. If you have a question, keep in mind, the numbers are consistently updating, so I might not have the exact number for you, but you can always head to our website, WTOC.com, to get that information. Okay, so of course, today is Georgia's primary big news all across the state. The polls closed about 30 minutes ago. We are continually making calls and checking the websites to get you the very up-to-date, most recent accurate information, of course, on all of the various races. We have team coverage for you. In fact, Almost all of us are working today to make sure you have everything you need to know all across the southeast of Georgia, taking a look at local statewide races that will impact you. Just so you know, there's always information online. And of course, there's a red bar at the top that literally says 2018 Georgia primary election. That is specifically where you can click. So the biggest race that everyone is watching right now is the gubernatorial race. Who will become Georgia's next governor? We have seven candidates. Let's look at the Republicans right now. Of course, they have five men vying for that. These are the most recent numbers into us. Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle in the lead right now. And then, of course, the other gentlemen who are running are Hunter Hill, Brian Kemp, Clay Tippins, and Michael Williams. Keep in mind that Brian Kemp is Secretary of State. Hunter Hill is a former state senator. Michael Williams is a current state senator. And Clay Tippins is a businessman. Now, because there are five here, as these numbers continue to update throughout the evening, keep in mind, if none of the candidates receive more than 50% of the votes, the top two with the most votes will then advance to a runoff on July 24th. Let's switch over to the Democratic side running for governor. There are two women Former State House Minority Leader Stacey Abrams, right now with 410 votes, and former State Representative Stacey Evans. Now, both of these ladies are vying to become the first woman ever to be head of Georgia. To be head of Georgia. Also, if Stacey Adams were to win, keep in mind she would become the first Black female governor of any state in the country. So this could potentially make history nationwide with a statewide race. Another big race we're looking at, Secretary of State. Of course, the candidates are fighting for Brian Kemp's position. He, of course, is a candidate for governor. So right now we have four Republican candidates. That includes the mayor of Alpharetta, David Bell Isle. We've also got State Representative Buzz Brockway. Again, these are the Republican candidates. We also have State Senator Josh McCoon and State Representative Brad Raffensperger. We also have Democrats running for Secretary of State. Former District 12 Congressman John Barrow is running against former State Representative D. Dawkins Hagler and the Chief Deputy Tax Commissioner for Rockdale County, R.J. Hadley, in the race as well. Again, keep in mind, if none of these candidates receive more than 50 percent, the top two with the most votes will advance to a runoff on July 24th. WTOC's bureau chief, Dal Kennedy, joins us live now. And Dal, you are covering the 12th congressional district race, and there are also quite a few candidates in that race. Dal. That's right, here at Bullock County, at the uh, Bullock County Commissioner's Annex. This is where they'll be bringing polls from all over the state, all over Bullock County, I should say. Bullock being one of the largest counties in Georgia geographically, so you've got precincts spread all over the county. and. Those polling precincts have to be closed up at 7 o'clock or when the last voter votes that was in line. Then those have all got to be tabulated, combined, put together, and then bring those electronic ballots back here to Statesboro. So there's a certain amount of driving that's going to slow those down. And sometimes Bullock County, we get the results here later rather than sooner when some other counties have wrapped up. But there is an assortment of names and races on the ballot today. Everything from the governor and lieutenant governor, those races that we've no doubt already talked about. In addition, several county commissions, school board races here in Bullock County. Then there is also the 12th congressional and then part of Statesboro, just Statesboro, voting to fill a vacated city council term. So they're doing that today. So everything from one precinct, one district of Statesboro, all the way up to the entire county voting on those other races. But 
particularly voting in the 12th congressional. And we've talked about this is a very spread out district. It stretches from the outskirts of Chatham County and Effingham over <coughs> stretches up into Scriven to Bullock to Candler up into a manual up into central Georgia to go to Dublin and further and all the way up into Augusta. A large area spread out. We've got five candidates. Uh, Representative Rick Allen looking for his third term. He has opposition within his own party with Augusta businessman Eugene Yu. The winner of that will take on the winner of three Democrats who are facing off tonight. We have Francis Johnson and Trent Neesmith, both from here in Statesboro, as the three of them, I should say the two of them, facing against Robert Ingham, a businessman out of Augusta. So two candidates from Statesboro, one from Augusta. Those three are competing. If there's a runoff between those two that'll face, or between those three, the top two vote getters would face off in July. If one of them wins it outright, and by outright we mean 50% plus one, if one of them wins it outright tonight, they'll face the winner of Rick Allen and Eugene Yu in November. So lots on the ballot here in Bullock County. We'll be going over those numbers tonight. We'll be here live at the Commissioner's Annex where they'll be counting the ballots. We'll also get in touch with Neesmith or, or uh, Francis Johnson, depending on the winner. We will talk with them. We'll have them for you later on this evening as well. But live in Statesboro, Dow Kennedy, WTOC News. Thank you so much, Dal. And as you can see, he is live in the field. We also have several other reporters out there as well, making sure to get you the most recent information. We will be taking them live in subsequent future digital newscasts, which again, we have about every 30 minutes tonight. That's not the norm, but we're doing something different to make sure you're always informed. I see you on Facebook saying, shouting out the different counties, asking if we're covering them. We are. We are working on gathering the data right now for you. So look forward to that in the next couple of digital newscasts. Also, keep in mind, we are just getting started with our digital newscast. We will be going for hours tonight. WTOC is your local news leader when it comes to complete live team coverage in our area. I think we have something to show that, yes, here we go. Literally, we're on our website, WTOC.com. We're online at Facebook and Twitter. We're on Roku. We're on Fire TV. So we're starting it right now and from now on for the rest of the evening, 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes, we're giving you updates, giving you what you need to know so you can pop in, pop out. You don't have to watch on TV to see the ticker just to wait for your race. It's also online at WTOC.com. I'm going to go get ready. We have another update for you coming up at around 8 o'clock, and I'll be joined by my 4 p.m. co-anchor, Mike Sela. I'll see you then.
so, uh, Any idea where Yellen lives? No. Good evening, and thank you for joining us here on this digital update at 8 o'clock. We're going to, be, going to be doing these every 30 minutes uh, tonight on election night. Following results as they come in, we're on Facebook, on our Roku app, on our news app, and all of the other digital platforms where you can normally catch our digital newscast. We're going to have coverage on all of the races, both local, state, and even federal races we're following. For, for you guys tonight, I'm following the governor race, and we are getting these results as they come in. These are very early numbers, but as they're coming in right now, Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle, you can see, has about 42% of the votes that are re uh, reported right now. As I said, these are very early uh, numbers. To give you an idea, only three of 159 counties have completely reported. On the Democratic side, Stacey Abrams, the Democrat, versus Stacey Evans. Uh, Stacey Abrams has about 70% of the votes reported so far. That comes out to about 13,500 of nearly 20,000 votes. On the Republican side with five people, they are expecting a runoff because if none of them get 50% plus one, then the top two vote getters will have a runoff and that election will be on July 24th. Right now, Casey Cagle, as you can see, has about 42% of the vote. Brian Kemp right behind him at about 28% of the vote. We can't stress this enough. These are very early numbers. These numbers will be coming in throughout the night and uh, as they update, they're on our website. And they're also on the Secretary of State's website. We'll update you as we get them. Now we do want to go to Romney. She's following some other races for us. Romney. Thank you very much, right? We appreciate it. I'm joined now by my 4 p.m. co-anchor, Mike Sela. We are here watching all the election results come in for Georgia primary day and it's been an exciting day so far. It has. This is another thing that's you will want to keep an eye on the Georgia right. Secretary of State's office so, and actually opened up some investigations so, uh, mm -hmm. involving today's primary. One involves in Chatham County with a poll opening up late this morning. Mm -hmm. So we're still working to get more information on that. They are only giving us vague terms in terms of the investigation at this point. That's but right. We're still trying to get more on that. Meanwhile, the Georgia Democratic Party has a voter protection hotline. If you have any uh, any concerns out there, you can call 1-888-730-5816. And we also want to thank those of you who called WTOC this morning. Dozens of people had an issue going to one voting precinct, finding there was absolutely no poll, no poll workers there. They called WTOC and said, what's going on? I want to vote before work. Meredith, uh, one of our reporters, Meredith Parker, actually looked into it. Turns out the website had the wrong location listed, so there wasn't any kind of fraud or trickery going on. But thank you guys for calling WTOC, relying on us to figure out what was going on. We got you the right address so that you guys could vote. So, again, we thank you very much for following us. Again, this is special election coverage digitally, so we're on Amazon Fire, Roku, Facebook, Twitter, and our website, WTOC.com. That's also where you can monitor live election results. I have it on my iPad, and I keep refreshing because the numbers just keep rolling in, which they'll be doing all night. Long. And it is interesting as you're keeping track of the numbers and you're also seeing the Georgia Secretary of State's website as well. And right. You refresh and to see, oh, we got an update. We got right. more. And it is exciting as you're seeing some of the numbers change. Especially the when the leads start to change. That's when it gets interesting. I don't think that will start to happen for quite a while, but that's when things in, in my life get good, when the races are tight. Okay, so I also want to let you guys know that we have more and alive reporters every 30 minutes. In fact, I think we had WTOC's Amanda Lebro following the race for... House District, District one, 1, I think. That's right, in the U.S. Congressional District 1 here in Georgia. Obviously, Buddy Carter running opposed, unopposed on the Republican mm -hmm. side, but Amanda is following the race on the Democratic side. We do want to check in with her now. Five, zero, Hey guys, I am outside of Lisa Ring's watch party in Richmond Hill because they are playing some live music inside, so you probably wouldn't be able to hear me. We have been out in Ryan County all day and Richmond Hill polling places, watching people come to vote. It was about 10% earlier this evening um, at some of the polling places that we went to that were reporting um, the registered voters came out to vote in tonight's primary. This is some video of Lisa Ring arriving at the watch party. She got here a little bit ago giving some supporters some hugs and things and she will be out here and I will be out here all evening waiting for those results and we'll bring you the latest information on the news now online and on air. All right, so you just heard Amanda Lebro talking about House District 1, the race for Democrats, which is Lisa Ring and Barbara Seidman. Also, keep in mind, that winner, like Mike just said, will go up against Buddy Carter in the fall.
It should be an interesting race as we move through, and we want to let you know uh, Democrats' House District 12 congressional seat. This is actually, we're looking back at this is the House District 1 that you see actually right there for the Democratic side. Don't misread the top part of that. It's Lisa Ray right now leading Barbara Sidney. Again, you see 57 to 42%. Now, we do want to move to House District 12 for the congressional race. We do have Trent Neesmith, Robert Ingham, and Francis Johnson. And Francis Johnson so far has a commanding lead there with 60% of the vote. And on to the Republican side for House District 12 of the Southeast, we have Rick Allen, who is the incumbent, by the way, right now with about 86%, and Eugene Yu with about 14%. Again, keep in mind, I know that sounds like a landslide, but only three counties in the entire state have fully reported. When I say three counties, that's three out of 159, so we're still very early on in getting these numbers rolling in. All right, we do want to move on, if we could, to... Our next race we have for Lieutenant Governor. This is on the Democratic ticket. We have Triana Arnold James and Sarah Riggs Amico and Amico with 55% of the vote right now. And for Republican Lieutenant Governor candidates, three men. Jeff Duncan, Rick Jafars, and David Schaefer. Again, right now we've got David Schaefer with about 43, 44%. Jeff Duncan, 25%. Rick Jafars with about 30%. So that one's a little bit closer than some of the other races we've seen. Again, still very early on in the evening. As more counties report, these numbers will change. And I think towards the end, we'll start to see them dramatically go up. Once you start seeing 50% of the counties, 60, 70, 80% of the counties, then you'll get a clearer idea of exactly what's happening and who might be winning certain races. Again, we are just getting started with your digital coverage all night long. I know people are asking on Facebook, what about Bullock County? What about Toombs County? What about Liberty County? States? What about the local races right. that a lot of people are worried about? School board races as well. And we are still getting some of those in when you're working with the, the smaller counties. Sometimes right. it takes a little bit more for those election boards to get them in before they're all counted. So this is more of a statewide range that we're getting now in terms of the votes that are being tallied so far. Right. Also some of the early Early voting that has been tallied up as well included in that so in fact, that is what's going on right now and the only local county I see with preliminary numbers is Jeff Davis County Commission District 5 Van Wooten has 55% of the vote and Jerry Wooden has 45% so again that is the only one locally I see so I see your questions on Facebook I know you want to know who's leading your local school boards your local commissions we're still waiting to get that information. Believe me, we are checking every few minutes. I've got a whole newsroom of producers behind me working feverishly to update these numbers, not only on our website, but also getting them from two different websites at the state level. And so keep in mind, this is a fluid situation. The numbers will change. We just ask for your patience. We are, of course, working to get you all that information for local counties because, I mean, we all want to know who the next governor is going to be, but it'll be a runoff in the fall with someone, but locally we want to know even more who's going to be leading. So keep in mind we'll be back in just a little bit with more updated numbers once we get them. Again, thank you so much for watching our digital stream on various platforms. We'll be back.
Good evening, I'm Elizabeth Rollins here at the Election Center. We are uh, bringing you the latest here live on Facebook, Twitter, Amazon Fire, as well as Roku. So stay with us tonight as we bring you uh, the latest on the election results. Um, I've got the Secretary of State's website up here, so you saw it updating, and we're getting uh, updates every few minutes, so bear with us here. But we wanted to bring you the latest on Lieutenant Governor, uh, if we can here. Let's see. So uh, for Republican candidate David Schaefer right now has about 46% of the vote. Only 25% of precincts are reporting, though, so we still got a long way to go. Um, and it looks like Jeff Duncan and um, Rick Jeffries neck and neck right now, 25% and then 27% of the vote there. If we if we scroll down to the Democratic candidates, um, Sarah Riggs, Amico, 55% of the vote taking the lead there, and then uh, Triana Arnold James, about 43%. But again, only 25% of all precincts and counties are reporting. So again, just a fourth of the way there. We got a, lo a long way to go. Uh, we're also tracking the Secretary of State um, race here. Looks like Brad Raffensperger, uh, about 34% here, but then we've got about 28, 15, and then 21% there. So still a very close race there that we'll have to be following uh, throughout the night as well. And then for the Democrat side, we have John Barrow taking the lead. Looks like 51%. Um, and then kind of neck and neck here with D. Dawkins, uh, Hagler, and then uh, R.J. Hadley. Again, only 25% of counties and precincts reporting as last check, Chatham had not even come in yet, um, as well as some of the main metro Atlanta counties. So some big counties that we're waiting on here uh, tonight. And we're going to keep you updated here at the Election Center. We want to send it over uh, to Mike Sela and Romney Smith now. All right, thank you so much, Elizabeth. Of course, we are here in the WTOC newsroom. We have been all day, and it seems like all night long so far. And we will be here throughout the evening as these election results come in for Georgia's primary, and we are keeping tabs on this. And I know a lot of people, you can check our website. That's mm -hmm. where you get the most updated right. results, WTOC.com. But some people are commenting. That's right. So we are on various platforms right now, and on Facebook, that's where you can interact with us live. People wondering, it's been hours since Chatham County has closed at 7 o'clock. Why aren't there numbers? Turns out we are dependent on them. So they actually have not reported any numbers thus far. People are really interested in the school board chairman and the school board positions. We don't have any information yet. Believe me, we have an entire room of producers who keep clicking refresh because everyone wants those numbers. So thank you very much for those of you who are joining us. We appreciate it. And keep in mind, we are working diligently to get you those numbers. And as soon as they come in, we will relay that to you. Of course, we are keeping track on many of the races that are going on in our area. And one of the biggest, we wish we had some results coming in for you already, but it is in Chatham County, Savannah, Chatham County School Board. A lot of races that people are looking at, not only president, but also some board members. That's right. All right, WTOC Sean Evans is on that story tonight, and here's what he has to say about it. Good evening, everyone. Sean Evans here with WTOC. I'm covering a very particular race here in Chatham County tonight. That is the race for the Savannah Chatham County Public Schools Board of Education president position. Now, we know back in February, current president Jolene Byrne announced that she was not going to be running for re-election. That opened the field up. We have five candidates for this spot tonight. And that is Ty Whiteley, Betty Morgan, Larry Lauer, David Lurch, and Joe Buck. A lot of them bringing past experiences in education, some with the board, also some current board members, and touting that as why they're the most qualified for this position. Now, we'll be following these numbers as they come in here very closely. Uh, again, the winner has to get 50 plus 1 percent of the vote. Otherwise, this goes into a runoff situation in July between the top two vote getters. So again, Following these numbers very closely here for the Savannah Chatham County Public Board of Education president spot. And after we're done with this live stream, you can check the numbers as they're coming in from the precincts here in Chatham County. All right. Thank you, Sean. And of course, we are keeping track of all the races in our area. And as we said, Chatham County, a little bit slow with their results right. coming in right now, 0% of the precincts reporting. But we are starting to get other precincts in our area, and we'll try to run down some of those numbers for you. But we want to take a look at a statewide race right now, yes. talking about the next state school superintendent. On the Democratic primary, you had Sid Chapman, Sam Mosteller, and Otha Thornton running for that. And it looks like Otha Thornton with 43% of the vote, Sid Chapman now at 35. In statewide education news, we're also looking at the race to become the next state superintendent when it comes to Republicans. Right now, John Bard with about 37% of the vote and Richard Woods with 
62%. Keep in mind, these are still preliminary numbers. That's because most of the 159 counties in the state of Georgia still have not fully reported. And sticking with education, we want to show you out of Effingham County. Those numbers are coming in from Effingham County. And there you see Robert Grant, the incumbent, with 51% of the vote right now. All right, another one, Effingham County Board of Education, District 4. We've got Beth Helmley with 63% and Ben Johnson with 36% of the votes. Again, this is in Effingham County for the Board of Education, District 4. Now we want to take you over to Liberty County, checking on their Board of Education. And there you see Lily Baker with 56% of the vote over Scott Carrier at this point with 43%. Also with Liberty County, with the Board of Education District 4, we've got three people. Karen Branson with 34% of the vote, Annette Payne with 38%, and Jim Johns with 27%. Again, Liberty County Board of Education District 4. Now let's move on to District 6, sticking with Liberty County. And there you see Shante Baker-Martin with 66% of the vote, and also Danita Strickland with 64%. All right, so now we've got... Did we do District 5 already? All right, so we've got... I think that was the District, was district 5. Six. I think it moved, moved forward. I it did, say. it did. So again, keep in mind, if we're going through this a little fast for you, you can always go to our website, WTOC.com, and literally it keeps refreshing about every 30 seconds as those numbers auto-populate into our system to make sure that everyone in local counties... We did not run down every single county that we have information for, so again, it's coming in right now. We are monitoring it, and we hope to get you more. I know I still see questions about Chatham County. It's coming. We're waiting for it to come. Not sure if there are any issues right now. We do know that one precinct actually had some issues with people getting confused, going to an old location, what was a new location. Not sure if that held up the process. Also, we did hear that Brian Kemp's office, Secretary of State's office, has opened up an investigation into right. four separate incidents throughout the state right now, and Chatham County did have one about a precinct opening late Correct. today, not at that 7 a.m. starting time. So we are keeping track of that, trying to keep you aware of that. We don't know if that has anything to do with the delay, but some of the numbers for Chatham County we are still waiting on, but we're going to be here tonight bringing you those. We sure will. And keep in mind, WTOC has live team coverage tonight in our area. We have a graphic for you to show you exactly how much and also all the different platforms that we're on. So our website, WTOC.com, the apps, Facebook, Twitter, Fire, Amazon Fire, if you have that, Roku. So really, in case you want to check in or maybe you have a show you want to watch, you can always still watch your show. Keep us open on the app. Or if you're on Facebook, you can still keep in the loop of the big races. We, of course, aim to be your number one source for these numbers as soon as they roll in. Yeah, we're going to be jumping in here throughout the night. And as soon as those numbers start coming in a little bit more, we'll be sure to pass them along to you. All right, we'll see you in a little bit.
Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us here as we give you complete coverage of Georgia primary election night. Here in 2018, we are looking at some of the biggest races. I'm Mike Sela. Thank you for being with us. And we do want to show you the one that a lot of people have been following and watching. You've seen all the ads coming through on TV many nights for you. We do want to check in on the Republican side for governor. Let's look at the race right now. And, of course, Casey Cagle has a commanding lead right now, but you need 50% plus one to secure the nomination that would take him in the fall without going to a runoff. Right now, it does not look like Casey Cagle will be able to do that. Brian Kemp, at this point, is in second place with about 26% of the vote, and Hunter Hill in third place at 17%. So we are closely following this race on the Republican side, but right now it does look like it will go on to a runoff that would be held on July 24th. Now, on the Democratic side, in the race for governor, Stacey Abrams with a commanding lead over Stacey Evans. In fact, Stacey Ab Abrams has declared victory just a short time ago at what is now her victory party. As you can see, that 73% looks like it will hold up and Stacey Abrams would become the Democratic nominee for governor in Georgia. This would be the first woman ever to lead one party's ticket for governor in Georgia in the race that will come in November. And if she would win, she would become the first black woman ever to be governor of any state. We do want to give you team coverage throughout our area. We've been watching a lot of close races out there and seeing these election results come in. Chatham County, we are still waiting on those results. A lot of people asking, where are the results from Chatham County? Because they want to know, especially with the school board president, up for grabs this year. But we do want to start in Statesboro. Let's go to Bullock County, where Dow Kennedy is standing by live with results from those races. Mike, the numbers still to continue to come in here in Bullock County. We do know so far is City Council, Statesboro District 5. It will be a runoff between Don Armel and Derek Duke. Duke, the top vote getter out of the three people running, but not able to capture that 50% plus one. So Armel and Duke will face a runoff in July 24th for that city council seat vacated by Travis Chance, who is also on the ballot now as a county commissioner. He is trailing behind incumbent Walter Gibson. He and newcomer Sid Jones running against Gibson for his seat, longtime councilman, uh, longtime county commission member Walter Gibson leading in his race. Now we see who's in the runoff with him or if Gibson can win it outright. So we're still following those. We're also following the 12th Congressional where on the Democratic side, Francis Johnson from here in Statesboro leading by a heavy margin over two other challengers wanting that Democratic nomination. The question will be whether or not Johnson can hold that 50%. At last look, he was leading by more than 50%. But there are still many, many precincts across the district, for the uh, 12th district of Georgia that still have to come in. Roughly a third have been counted according to the Secretary of State's office. But with that, that first third that has come in, Johnson has a sizable lead, might win it outright if those numbers continue to hold through the evening. We will continue to follow these here in Bullock County and throughout Southeast Georgia. And we'll have those for you on WTOC as well as here on Facebook and on our website. Live in Statesboro, Dow Kennedy, WTOC News. All right. Thank you, Dow. And we do want to get to some other Bullock County results here for the school board, District 4. Let's take a look at that race right now if we can. And April Newkirk has a lead, it looks like at this point, 58% of the vote over Adrian McCaller in that race. Let's move over to Bullock County Board of Education, District 5. There you see Glenara Martin with 53% of the vote to Mary Felton's 46%. As we said, we are still waiting for some other counties to report, especially Chatham County that has been absent at this point, and we have been monitoring this throughout the night. We do not know the reason for the delays as we are getting results in from other counties as we move on through the night. But one of the races also following is for the U.S. District 1 Congress race on the Democratic ticket. It's all been assured that the Democratic challenger will face Republican incumbent Buddy Carter in the race this November. Of course, Lisa Ring and Barbara Seidman are vying for the Democratic side to see who will go up against Buddy Carter. And uh, we do want to check out that race. Our Amanda Lebro is standing by. Coming in with about 65% of the 
logo right now. Of course, that's not official, but Team Ravy here is obviously very excited. You can hear lots of live music going. Here's a look at her greeting some of her supporters just a few minutes ago at this watch party here at Black back in Richmond Hill. And of course, they are all sporting a lot of their victories for Congress here for sign buttons the whole nine yards. All right. Thank you, Amanda, for that live report. Of course, we're going to be here throughout the night bringing you results as they come in throughout the evening here on WTOC, also on Roku, on Facebook. We will have it on our website exactly where you can check out the results, WTOC.com. We will have continuous coverage as well as more results coming up on the news at 11 and more results come in. We will be breaking in to bring those to you in getting some of those updates. From WTOC, I'm Mike Sela with your 2018 general primary results.
Good evening, everyone. Romney Smith along with Mike Seela at WTOC to give you a digital election update. We're broadcasting on various streams right now. That includes our website, WTOC.com, both of the WTOC apps, as well as Amazon Fire, Roku, and Facebook. And Facebook is where you can actually interact with us live if you want to leave a comment, ask a question. We're certainly monitoring that as well. The polls closed three hours ago, and we are finally getting more and more numbers rolling in. We are starting to see some of those numbers in from Chatham County as well. And also, watching one of the biggest races across the state, who will replace Governor Nathan Deal as governor of Georgia as we are moving through the primary election and seven people vying for this job yep. on the Democratic and Republican side. One race, gonna looks like it's going to run off. Right. Another one has already declared victory. Let's check in with Wright Gasaway for the latest on that. Hey guys, in a season of unpredictable elections, this election really shaped up the way a lot of people were thinking it would. The Republicans look like they're headed to a runoff. Casey Cagle and Brian Kemp, the two leading vote getters there. The Democrat Stacey Abrams is declaring victory right now. If we look at those numbers on the Republican side, Casey Cagle leads right now with about 40% of the votes uh, that have been counted so far. About 61% of the votes of around 85 counties have completely reported. Brian Kemp is coming in second place at about 27%. So since no one got 50% plus one, the two top vote getters, Casey Cagle and Brian Kemp, will head to a runoff. Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle and Secretary of State Brian Kemp. There have been about 420 votes cast for these Republican uh, candidates. Clay Tippins, Hunter Hill, and Michael Williams finishing in behind Cagle and Kemp. On the Democratic side, this really was a landslide victory for Stacey Abrams. She declared victory about an hour ago in the votes that have been counted so far. She's got about 75 percent of the votes uh, beating Stacey Evans, 219,000 to about 75,000. So adding those votes up, about 420,000 votes cast for the Republican candidates and about 300,000 cast for the Democratic candidates. The runoff for the governor, the Republican nomination will be on July 24th, and then their governor race will be election will be in November. We'll monitor these numbers, and as soon as we hear from Cagle or Kemp, we'll pass that along. We also are hearing from Stacey Abrams right now, and I'll have more from her tonight on the news. Thank you, Ryan. Guys. Of course, Casey Cagle has been lieutenant governor into his third term now. He's right. been 12 years, and he was the, actually the first Republican lieutenant governor elected in the history of Georgia. So they're looking to replace him. Now they've had the election for that on the Democratic side for mm -hmm. lieutenant governor. Let's check in with some of the results on that. We have Sarah Amico and Triana James running for that. And it looks like Sarah Amico has got 55% of the vote in that race. And when it comes to Republican at lieutenant governor candidates, we've got three people. Jeff Duncan, Rick Tafaras, and David Schaefer. And right now, it looks like David Schaefer is winning with about 47, almost 48% of the vote, with Jeff Duncan with 25%, and Rick Tafaras with 26%. Let's move on to Democrats running for the next state superintendent. For schools, we have Sid Chapman, Otha Thornton, and Sam Mosteller. And it looks like Otha Thornton has 43% of the vote, Sid Chapman with 36% of the vote. So that looks like it will be going to a runoff in that race. And in other state education news, we're also looking to see who will become the next state superintendent. The Republicans who want the top spot, John Barge with 39% and Richard Woods with 60% of the votes at this point in time. Now keep in mind, the polls did close at 7. A lot of you have been waiting and asking us for the numbers for Savannah Chatham. Happy to finally say they are starting to roll in right now. Yeah, finally coming in. And Archon Evans has been watching that. Let's go to him with the latest. Good evening, folks. I'm here uh, in front of the Board of Education building on or just off of President Street right now. We're getting these numbers in unofficial results right now coming in from the precincts around Chatham County. But right now it looks like Joe Buck has a pretty sizable lead over all the other uh, contestants here or candidates rather five altogether going for that Board of Education president spot. Again, this is an office that he held from 2007 to 2014, so definitely familiar territory for Joe Buck. Looking again at these unofficial results, we're seeing uh, Betty Morgan at 23% of the votes, Ty Whiteley behind her at 19% of the votes. Now, again, 
if one single candidate doesn't get 50 plus one percent of the vote, we're looking at a runoff election situation, which would be July 24th. So again, Joe Buck right now with 46 percent of the vote, unofficial count at this point. I am going to be speaking with Mr. Buck about these results so far what uh, the possibility and all likelihood of a runoff election will mean for this spot. But again, these are the results coming in for the Savannah Chatham County Public School Board of Education president spot. Uh, again, all of these candidates wanting to bring this board more closely together, make it more cohesive and address that advanced ed report. Uh, again, calling for this board to work with more unity. So again, I will be speaking with uh, Joe Buck about this lead right now and the possibility and likelihood of a runoff election. For now, Sean Evans reporting in Savannah. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Sean. Of course, we will continue to monitor things as the results keep coming in for the Georgia primary. And we also want to show you WTOC.com. That's where you can go directly, find the results from your races that you are looking for. We do have a long list, so you'll be wanting to scroll through that to find what results for which race you want, including our state races, local races, county races, you name it, we do have it there. Right now, I'm also zoning in on Savannah Chatham School Board. That's what a lot of you have been asking us about. So certainly, like Mike said, all of the information is on here, as well as other things like the Bacon County t Sploss vote, Richmond Hill ad valorem tax, Board of Education positions in various counties. So double check WTOC.com. That's where you can find a lot of information. Again, WTOC is your local news leader when it comes to the most complete live team coverage in our area. And we will continue to update these numbers and update you on air and online as the night continues.
Good evening, everyone. I'm Romney Smith at WTOC for your election update. We are following some pretty big races right now. WTOC has team coverage, and we're taking a look at both local and statewide races that will impact you. So you know while we run through the election results thus far, if there's something you missed, you can always go to our website, WTOC. Dot com. It took a few hours, but we finally have numbers from Savannah Chatham County. When it comes to the school board president race, Joseph Alexander Buck with 46.2% right now. And you can see all the rest on your screen right now. In second place is Betty Morgan. Again, we have a lot of different conversations as far as the gubernatorial race with seven candidates vying. Looks like it will be a runoff for the Republicans. And of course, Stacey Abrams is also talking with us, declaring the victory at this point in time. We'll continue the conversation online. Again, we are on various platforms right now, including our website, WTOC.com, Facebook, Fire, Amazon Fire, if you have that, Roku, and more. But for right now, I want to bring my co-anchor, Mike Sela, back in because we have been pouring through numbers all night long. We keep hitting refresh, and I think we both kind of feel like we're a hamster on the little wheel, just going back and forth, but we know it's all good. It's all so you can get the most recent information. I want to go back, if we can, to the school board president for Savannah Chatham County because that is a race that a lot of people have been looking forward to. A lot of people have been watching that ever since Jolene Byrne decided she wasn't going to run for re-election. And Joe Buck, back in the race, this is a position that he held for two terms and the only reason he says he did not go for a third was legally he could not do that so he wants his old job back and he's got 46 percent of the vote but could go to a runoff here against betty morgan who right now has 23 percent and ty wesley has 19 percent of the vote and keep in mind if there is no one candidate who gets more than 50 percent that means the people with the top two most votes will go to a runoff in late july so just a little bit of information on that front sticking with the savannah chatham county district school board when it comes to the district six seat we have some information for you there. David Bringman with 47% and Alfreda Jeanette Goldwire with 52.88%. So that one pretty close statistically. Yeah, the numbers are even closer when you bring it down to the actual votes. And we want to move on to Savannah Chatham County School Board District 8. And there we have Tanya Howard Hall with 63% of the vote and Ruby Jones right now coming in with 36%. Again, the biggest thing I think a lot of people are looking forward to, new governor. We will have a new governor sometime this year. Seven people vying for it right now, five men who are all Republicans, and two women who are both Democrats at this point in time. Stacey Abrams already declaring her victory. She has been leading with about... 75% of the vote. Not all counties ran, but that is still quite the long stretch. Yeah, we do want to mention these are unofficial tallies at this point, but the Abrams campaign already claiming victory earlier tonight. And we also want to look at the Republican side, right. and that looks like Casey Cagle as the leading vote getter in this side, but not enough. He, as you said, needs that 50% plus one to get an outright win in the Georgia general primary, but it looks like he will come up a little bit short on that. Right. And Brian Kemp looks like he's in the second place finish. Absolutely. And a lot of people not surprised by these two, especially with Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle. He's been in the position for what, 12, 13 years 12 years, years as Lieutenant Governor. A lot and, of experience. Yeah. He, um, thought about making a run for governor back in 2010. Mm -hmm. He actually announced that he was running, had the campaign going, but then pulled back and then decided to run again just for lieutenant governor. And of course, he's held that for three terms at this point. Absolutely. So he is the front runner, but again, looks like it will be going to a runoff in late July at this point in time. We do want to show you our website, WTOC.com. This is where you can actually get updates. The website continues to refresh itself. I just want to scroll so you can see right there. We have, again, the state wide races we also have more local races as that's well. right u.s house district one u.s congressional district to take on republican buddy carter in the november election looks like lisa ring has declared victory in that race she was taking on barbara seidman in that election and of course lisa ring would be the democratic candidate taking on the incumbent congressman buddy carter all right so there's a lot more to get to again if you're looking for specific races savannah chatham bacon mm -hmm. county richmond hill the tax questions bullet county we've got so many again on our website if we can go back to that really quick bradley so again just wtoc.com we got a big red bar at the top click on it you can see all of the races effingham glenn county so again everything you need to know right here and a tip keep hitting refresh because these numbers 
will update throughout the night. We'll have even more live team coverage coming up at 11 o'clock on the news on WTOC. We've been here pretty much every 20 to 30 minutes giving you updates. We thank you guys so much for joining us all night for our special election team coverage. Stick with us on air at 11 p.m. But for now, this is going to be it for us. <laughs> That's right. Check out WTOC.com for the very latest. I'm Mike Sela with Romney Smith. Thank you for joining us here for our special Georgia primary election coverage.